Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Hayden Halsey with Results Commercial and we're going to talk about the average cap rate for net lease investments. So we've had a net lease video series here and this will build off of some of the other videos. We get this question quite a lot to say, you know, what is the average cap rate on a net lease investment? And of course, just like most real estate questions, the answer is it depends. So it depends on a couple things. Let's, I'll give you some hard numbers here, so don't worry. But the key piece to first address is what are the variables? And the variables, of course, are who is the tenant? How strong are they credit wise? How long of a lease term? This is a huge one. Of course, and you're looking at the property and the structure. And then you're looking at what category? You know, is it retail, industrial, uh, government? You know, there's mul uh, multiple different net lease categories as we talked about in another video. To give you an overall view, you could say what's the average cap rate for all of these categories within net lease? And that number would be about six and a half percent. Now keep in mind, of course, that fluctuates and there's all these variables and we're talking about Q3 2020. So the categories, just to touch on those because that plays into uh, you know, what that cap rate might look like. You got retail, industrial, healthcare, med office, government, which is GSA, and then corporate office, which is kind of that capital markets area. We did a full video on this as well that you can check out. One of the pieces to note is single tenant versus multi-tenant in this case, because that will affect the cap rate. Let's start with retail. So the average for retail would be about six and a quarter, 6.25%. Now, Let's start with QSR, quick service restaurants. That average cap is gonna be about five and a half to six. Good category, those would be your Arby's, your McDonald's, your Wendy's. Automotive is actually doing quite well, which is gonna be around six and a half percent. Jiffy Lube, NTB, National Tire and Battery. Pharmacy, this is a little bit volatile, but overall pretty good. Here you're gonna be around six and a half percent as well. CVS, Walgreens, uh, Rite Aid. Casual sit down and dining. Here you're gonna fluctuate somewhere in the six and a half to seven-ish percent. Banks, banks are actually a little bit higher than you'd expect, somewhere around seven and a half percent. Of course, now just know with all of these, if you have a, a 20 year lease, you might be seeing caps that are down in the 5%, regardless of category. If you start to see leases where there's two years left, you're gonna see those cap rates being a lot higher. It's a you know inverse relationship with risk. Now let's touch on big box. Um, this is gonna be somewhere in the range of seven to seven and a quarter. Completely depends though, because big box is a, you know, it's a large category. That's gonna depend, is it a Home Depot, which is doing really well and that's gonna have some low caps? Is it a Macy's or a JCPenney, you know, where you know, those, those retailers aren't doing quite as well? You're gonna see higher caps in those cases. C stores and gas stations. Overall, those are doing very well. You don't see as many of those, but that's gonna be somewhere in the five and three quarters, 5.75 range as an average. Dollar stores, those are actually doing quite well as you know at this current Q3 2020, and those are around seven-ish percent. It's a hot category overall. Now, one of the pieces here, kind of interesting fact, the average lease term on net leases is around 13 years. A lot of leases, when they're new, you'll see them signed somewhere in the 15 to 20 year range with options extending way out. Of course, I've, you know, you'll see 50 year leases or you'll see even five to 10 years as well. Industrial, very hot category. Overall, that would be somewhere in the, the average is about seven, 6.99 to be exact from the data that we were pulling. We have a property on, uh, in Roseville, it's a single tenant equipment group, and that cap is in the, call it seven and a half-ish range, that's under, under contract with a lot of good interest. Healthcare med office, this is a little bit volatile right now, especially with what's going on. Overall people, you know, there's, there's quite a few groups that still like that category, but there's also quite a few developers in this area that are slowing down a lot of that new development because you need to get some, you know, wrap our heads around what's actually going on and where's the future gonna take us. That's somewhere around the six and a half range. We sold a Mayo Clinic in New Prague, short lease term there, had good investor interest, but that traded in the upper sevens just because short lease term, rural market, had an excellent tenant there with the Mayo Clinic, of course. Uh, a couple other buildings as well where you know we're dealing with different healthcare type uses and they're laying off employees at other centers, which means that that's only gonna create some uncertainty and panic for investors slowing down interest. So that gives you a really rough overview, gives you some hard numbers. Of course, the answer is it depends. Lease term, tenant, location, all the above. But that should at least help give you, you know, some idea on what a cap rate on a net lease investment might look, might look like. So check out our videos. Uh, go subscribe on our YouTube channel and thanks for watching.